jungle. It's better if I talk to Madam. He searched for his phone, noticing it on the table that was on ten steps away from the bed. But he remained silent, feeling weak, unsure how to reach the table since his stomach was stitched due to the control, making his body weaker than before. He was too weak to move by himself, so he looked at the doorway, but no one was there. Then he remembered Bella's room also on the same floor as his. He called Bella's name a bit louder, hoping she could hear him come, but he didn't see her appear. She called her name again and again, this time saying Bella more loudly than before while looking at the doorway. But she wasn't present, she got upset. Jungle. Where did she go? Now who will come? When the girls are around and I haven't commanded their duties on this floor. He spoke with a low tone but his upset expression turned into relief as he remembered Wine's room was also nearby. Should I call her now? To help me? No, I don't need her help. He shook his head, not depending on his wife's help. I can go and take my phone. He removed the blanket from his body as he tried to get it. But he hissed when he felt the pain from his injury due to his movement. Bearing the pain, he somehow got up and started slowly walking towards the table, holding his hand on his stomach because the stitching was causing sharp pain inside his injury. While he walked, he forced his body not to fear the pain, but his stitching deepened at the pain. When he bent for the phone, gas escaped from his mouth with pain, so he closed his eyes trying to bear the intense pain. He was about to kneel to surrender to the pain, but two arms slapped on him, preventing him from surrendering. He studied his posture, holding onto the person before opening his eyes. But when his eyes found the one who held him, it was his wife, not someone else. He was frozen as his gaze hovered on her while she struggled bearing his weight. Her attention was only on helping him, not looking into his eyes. One, put your hand on my shoulder. He didn't respond, so she looked at his face to understand why. She gasped when she realized he was just lost in her presence. Breaking eye contact, she convinced herself to take the first step. Holding his hand and placing it on her shoulder, she wrapped his hand on her shoulder, guiding him back to the bed. So he was also automatically walking towards the bed in the chaotic second. Yes, he even forgot his pain as he was that much in his wife's touch. She slowly guided him to the bed, trying to make him sit on the edge gently, not bothering his injury. But as she leaned slightly forward, he didn't catch on her intention. In an extent to move, he suddenly shifted, causing himself to fall forward. As he was about to fall, immediately grabbed her waist. That's it, they both fell onto the mattress, with her lying on the mattress and him on top of her. She looked at him shivering and placed her hands on her chest to keep some distance between them. Even though he wasn't fully on top of her, it was their first time in this position. While he gazed at her, observing how they ended up in this position for the first time on the bed, he remained silent, not moving, even though he hadn't completely landed on her. The room resounded with the weight of the unnamed moment. She felt his warm breath, even though he didn't let his body touch hers. Despite being in a weak chair, he was doing his best with his wife. But how many seconds could he manage? Let's see. She tried to move under him, causing him to lose his control and his body to fall on her. She flinched and hissed in pain. That's when she shook her gaze into his eyes with discomfort. It made his heartbeat skip a bit due to her closer gaze. The depth of his feelings became a slow rhythm symphony without music. While the eyes created an unspoken tension between them for the first time in his view, only time seemed to freeze as they directed this new awkward closeness. Please move, she said slowly, but Jungkook's ears weren't working in the present as he was only admiring her look from underneath. She followed her eyebrows with a question mark, glanced at him, and then slightly removed her hands from her chest, placing them on his chest. This made his heartbeat skip a bit again. He even widened his eyes, 
film The Impact of a Woman in his life for the first time, but she wondered why he was reacting so strongly. When she found his response weird, she gently pushed him, making him know about her. She then got up from the bed. He couldn't collect the strength to resist her actions while he was feeling weird as his wife only focusing on her face, filled with silent wonder. Well, I'm sorry. She said without wasting a second, was about to leave the room, not daring to look at his face. But he called her to stop when she turned around. Jungkook, hey, stop there. His thumb and stopped her, and she by her lower lip intention slowly turning back, she faced him but didn't raise her head, her hands clutching the hem of her dress. Jungkook, look at my face, not the floor. His cold voice sent a chill down her spine, but she had to raise her head and make her eyes meet his. But as she looked into his calm eyes, instead of seriousness, confusion set in. She thought he might be mad with her for entering his room without permission, but his calm gaze left her speechless. He appreciated her obedience to his words. And this time she thought he might be waiting for an explanation of why she was there. So she began to explain the reason for her presence. Well, I'm sorry for entering your room without asking for permission. Please forgive me this time. He didn't say anything, just continued looking into her eyes. Well, actually this isn't my first time coming in. It's my second time. He knew that already, but he remained silent, not asking how she got in when he was about to fall. I know he she answered that question too. I heard you calling Bella's name, but when you called it louder the second time, I got worried. I wonder if there was any emergency or if you needed help, so I came. I couldn't eat right away, as I was nervous. But when I saw you about to fall, I had to enter the room to help you. He was surprised. How could she answer him, even though he didn't ask? How could she understand his thoughts? He thought maybe she could sense his intentions and questions. But what surprised him even more was that she had never spoken to him this much. She always remained silent. As he focused only on her, she misunderstood his case, thinking he might be about to give her some punishment. That's why he remained silent, preventing her from leaving, just to hurt her, but because her words had stuck him. One, I'm extremely sorry, I couldn't help you when my father shot you. But I couldn't help myself process what was happening around me at the time. Facing that much violence, gunfire, and the killing between both gangs, my father's and yours, it felt like a nightmare on your wedding day. I was scared at first. I'm not a brave girl who can handle everything smoothly. I'm a dumb girl who gets scared even by a small mouse. Please try to understand me and don't hate me like hunters. As she expressed why she couldn't help him and explain herself, Jango's heart weakened again, but he wasn't ready to be normal with her. Maintaining a cold expression with furrowed eyebrows, his silence made her struggle but she spoke again trying her best to make him believe in her. At least 10% maybe. One, please, I'm not what you are thinking. I'm just a normal girl, not a killer or someone who can act. Jungkook's eyes stared into hers. Her eyes didn't avoid his gaze as she spoke. He also knew that if someone was lying, they couldn't look into others' eyes. He was already forced to believe in her without his cancer when he learned about her past. But he was struggling to accept the two between being Johnson and just being Jungkook. But the deep down he believed in her, understanding the beauty of her intention and what she was saying. is somewhat confusing. If she had told him about her full star, would he not have let the bond reach this level? But as a mafia king forced by his father seek revenge for family members' death, but his true nature as revealed by wine without his consent, and be nosed to him and against his will, she just exposed his true nature. He only viewed himself based on what his father told him, not realizing who he truly was. One, please try to trust me once. Django, 
Why did you try to escape from me then? Don't you know I can catch you effortlessly? She lowered her head, paused from replying, as if she had really made a mistake. But it wasn't as per her understanding. Jump up, answer me. Why? I'm scared of you. He looked at her with a strange expression on his face. as if he was hearing it for the first time while she swallowed down a lump in her throat jango yeah i'm your husband why are you scared of me why normally husbands aren't supposed to be cruel and angry punching their wives but you are the opposite jango mm-hmm. he sighed closed his eyes feeling a sense of bad without outwardly expressing it jango so you won't be scared if i'm not angry with you If I won't scare you, if I don't punish you, she raises her head, looks at him. She heard him but misunderstood. He raises his questions with his expressions, but she doesn't answer, blinking her eyes and saying nothing. Jango, get my phone from the table. He looked at the phone where he pointed, walked towards the table, took the phone and handed it to him. Jango, you can go now. She nodded and immediately left, as if her life depended on it. Seeing her disappear instantly, he shook his head in disbelief. But when he called his dad's number, there was no answer. Jango, why he is not answering? Is he busy now? I need to talk to him. Or purpose he is still angry with me, which is why he wasn't responding. Maybe as a part of a revenge plan to make her pregnant. And he got a call from home. He picked up the call. Hum. Have you woken up early? Jung. Hmm. Where are you guys? Hum. Jay and I came to the meeting, and he is handling it on your behalf. Don't worry. We will get there quickly without delay. Jung. Hmm. But where is Bella? I called her, but she didn't respond. When I needed help, is she with you? Hum. No, she must be out there or taking a shower. Maybe when you call her. But Jango, where is the girl whose name is Wan? Didn't she help you when you needed it? Jango, why are you dragging her into this? Hum, Jay and I told her to take care of you as your wife, to take responsibility. But she was ignoring you, wasn't she? Asked before replying. Jango, no, she helped me. Hum, arrives here in ten minutes with Jay. Move quickly. Saying this, he ended up the call, not waiting for Hans' response. Hans, finally we are back, Mr. Jungkook. He extended his hand, seemingly ready to give Jungkook a big hug, but Jungkook looked at Hans with raised eyebrows, as if he questioning Hans' intentions. Jay pushed Han aside, ran to Jungkook with an excited smile on his face. He got on the bed and sat next to Jungkook so closely. Jay, I pushed Han. He smiled at Han, but Han pouted ignored Jay and looked at Jungkook. Jungkook, it's okay, Han. How did the meeting go? Is everything okay? Han, yeah, it's okay. And they asked about you, but we told them you were busy. Jay, because we wanted to keep this matter hidden due to your father, Jango. If he knows this, he won't hesitate to kill him and his family cruelly. He said with a loud tone. Han, that would have been great. He poked his tongue into his cheek, but Jay gave a serious glare to Han while wrapping his arm around Jango's shoulder. Jay, you are Adam's minded. Han, what the? He glanced at Jango, who was silent. Why are you still in the same outfit? Didn't she come to change it? Jay intervened, understanding that this matter wasn't going to increase. Jay, ah, oh, Han, why are you always asking about her? She, she, she. It's a small matter to change clothes, but she is a girl. She might be feel uncomfortable or definitely be shy to change her husband's dress. So I'll help him change. What would you say, Jango? Han, as you wish, I'll go. He rolled his eyes and made his way out of there. Jay, Jungkook, say something. He asked Jungkook, who looked dull. Jungkook, I'm not feeling okay. Jay, of course you don't feel well until you recover. Jungkook, it's not about my injuries, Jay. It's about my mental health. 
I feel like I'm fighting an invisible war with someone inside. He said in an overtone. Jay, do you want to share anything with me about the struggles inside you? Jango. Yeah. I do, but not now. Give me some time. Don't go back. Stay with me here. Jay, of course I'll stay. I won't leave you like this when you aren't fine. But Jango, I heard that your dad said to me her pregnant for revenge force fooling. Jango stared in disbelief at him, but Jay spoke again. Jay, to take revenge, do anything. But not this one, Jango. In my opinion, she doesn't deserve this. You have already hurt her so much. It's enough. Don't do more. I know, you never refuse what your dad said since childhood. Not even once did you turn against him. I am also not sure if you can refuse his command for that girl. But in the corner of my heart, I feel like you might listen if I tell you what right is. Jungkook remained quite unsure of how to respond. His nerves getting his better off him. While Dae was staring back at Jungkook, he believed that no one cared Jungkook except his dad. So even now, if anyone can say what is good to Jungkook, trying to make him realize not only to listen to his dad, then Jungkook might by chance understand it himself. Ron was nervously in the room, roaming, questioning how to enter her husband's room. She had just read a prediction that Jungkook would take his message in a few moments. That's why she was nervous now. Why should I really go to his room? Jay asked from outside. Whose room why? She saw Jay standing outside her room, gesturing with his hand to ask if he could come in. She nodded and he entered walking towards the bed and sitting down. Jay, are you talking about Jungkook on purpose? One. Hmm. Jay, it's okay. You can start it tomorrow. I'll take care of him today, okay? She sighed in relief. Jay, come sit here. He parted the bed next to him. She hesitated but since he was nice to her, she went to the bed and sat next to him. Jay, don't think too much. Let it happen as it may. Your own thinking can change anything here, okay? But I'm not overthinking. She awkwardly tried to say but he held her hand gently caressing it. She didn't back her hand when he touched her. Jay, I can feel that you are awkward whenever I'm around. Just be friendly with me, okay? She nodded as he offered comforting words to ease her. Bella entered wine's room to tell her former dining setting serving pleasure, a large glass dinner plate with a selection of dishes, including some delectable extras. But her eyes got wet as she seen Jay holding Wine's hand with an air of affection. The two appeared like a couple deeply engrossed in each other. Bella's heart skipped a bit at the unexpected scene. She unintentionally loosened her grip on the plate, causing it to fall and create a resounding pleasure. One and Jay saw Bella and observed them in silence. Wine, Bella? Wine takes her hand back from Tay and moves towards Bella to offer her, but Tay remains seated, noticing Bella's tears already. Even Bella lowers her head as she picks the shattered pieces of the plate and food from the floor, hiding her face from them. Why, I'll help you. She was about to bend down, but Bella had already gotten up and not looking at them as she hid her tears. Bella, it's okay. Sorry for the disturbance. Saying that she turned away, wiping the remaining tears in seconds, she left. Wine didn't understand Bella's strange behavior. 